Hello. Hello. <laughs> that was so bad. I'm cringing so hard. <laughs> I'm never doing that again. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Anyways, you just clicked on 20 KOTLC facts that either we just don't talk about or that I was kind of shocked to hear. I also got some of these from the KOTLC Wikia, so thank you so much to them for collecting all these facts over the years. Also, I wanted to inform you that we will be going live this weekend to celebrate 7,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. We will be going live Saturday, May 8th from 3.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. It's always a great time. We have a blast of fun with you guys. Last time, like, 100 of people came out to talk with us, chat with us, make our lives feel less lonely. So make sure you join, set a reminder on your phone. But I don't like my interest to be long, so let's get straight into it. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you enjoy our content, and let's get right into it. All right, the first one is kind of funny. Sophie has visited the healing center 27 times just by the end of nightfall. So I think she went to the healing center two times in flashback as well. So that's like almost 30 times throughout the whole series. And that might not sound like a big number, but wow, if you think about it, I haven't even gone to the doctors probably 30 times in my life. Like I probably go like once a year and that's probably it. And so 30 times and maybe she's probably gone even more for just like general checkups and before she was even, you know, in the Lost City. So like that's just insane. Like wow, Sophie. Number two, Fitz has been looking for Sophie since he was six years old for over nine years. Wow. <laughs> I mean, to imagine Fitz six years old walking around at the human cities. I can't imagine that. <laughs> Toddler fits just walking around. Have you seen this girl with blonde hair and blue eyes? Like, <laughs> that would be so funny. I could not take that seriously. We need some, like, uh, short stories of Fitz's past and, like, his journey to find Sophie. That would be so cool. Number three, Shannon makes pop culture references within her Iggy choices. Pink dancing Iggy probably refers to Iggy Azalea. Iggy's Purple Rain is most likely a reference to Prince with his famous song, Purple Rain. And Iggy's Ice Ice Iggy probably refers to Ice Ice Baby. There's also the Mellow Yellow one, and I don't know if that is a reference to a song, but definitely we got Ice Ice Iggy, and I did listen to the song Ice Ice Baby before I filmed this video to hype myself up, so we love Iggy for that. We love Iggy for making us listen to some music, and we know Shannon is big into music as well. Number four, the name Fenton in Irish means white fire. Vincent can erase his memories, as Keith says, locking anything dark but essential away. So I think this is really cool that Shannon actually kind of matches some of the meanings to the names. So she's probably like looking at like what are names that resemble fire, and that's really how you can know what Shannon has planned for them. So Vincent, meaning white fire, that pretty much <laughs> symbolizes Everblaze, and I think it's really cool how she did that and how that all worked out because that's like the perfect name because Fenton just feels fiery and it also has a lot of significance behind it. We always stand Shannon for that. Also, one that I thought really cool was Amy is a book nerd just like us. You can see the books behind me. I just love reading and that's why I really enjoy some of the book references. In the Keeper Lost City series, Amy is known to be referencing Narnia, Harry Potter, and even Lord of the Rings. Uh, so it's really cool to see her like kind of, you know, match things in Lost Cities to all these different books that Shannon actually inspired from, you know. Shannon actually took a lot of uh, inspiration from the Lord of the Rings and X-Men and such like that. So it's really cool to see how she kind of reflects her own book love, her reader's book love, the character in the books, book love, all into one. It's super cool. Number six, Fitz says that the words he uses to enter Sophie's mind are, it's me. And this is like the cutest Sophie's moment. As you guys know, I both ship so Keith and Sophie's. I don't really mind what ends up. And I think it's just so cute that he's like, he says, it's me. And Sophie's mind just subconsciously lets her in. And that's definitely an argument for Sophie's and definitely something that I do believe in. Sophie has a lot of internalized trust for Fitz. Keith always betrays Sophie's trust. So he doesn't just have that level. I want him to get to that level. Level, of course, because I ship so Keith, but Fitz just already kind of wins in this scenario because he already has that trust. Number seven, Shannon foreshadowed Mr. Forkel's identity of Magnate Leto by having him say the iconic catchphrase, you kids, when Sophie met him for the first time. It's strange how even though Sophie was theorizing about Mr. Forkel, she didn't notice a saying that he was known for. It counts to Sophie's obliviousness that the fandom makes fun of. I like this fact because, and I wrote this, because like, I remember reading you kids and not even like registering 
that. Like, it's such a subtle foreshadow, even though it's kind of a big reveal. Like, I don't know, if you ha actually saw the U Kids and were like, that's Mr. Forkel, if you made that connection, I want you to comment down below. Kind of also proves Sophie's obliviousness, because imagine being in Sophie's character and actually, you know, living in the world where Mr. Forkel would call her U Kids all the time, and so it's kind of weird how she couldn't recognize Mr. Forkel, and I think that does play into Sophie's obliviousness, like with Keith and Fitz kind of battling over her. It's just kind of like a funny thing that I think is cool. Sophie's obliviousness is something that kind of makes her depart from a Mary Sue. It's kind of something funny and it provides comic relief. Number eight, Morello was the first person to tell Sophie about pyrokinetics and she was also the first person to manifest it. Well, not necessarily the first person to manifest it, but basically she was a person who manifested it later in the series. And I think that's just so ironic. Like she was like, oh, I don't like pyrokinetics or like it's a forbidden talent. You don't want to have pyrokinetics because then you're monitored by the government and such like that. And now it was a forbidden talent after that. I kind of feel bad for Mar Morella for having this talent because it does cause a lot of burden and uncomfort, uncomfort for her, but it makes her included in the Black Swan. And it also gives her the ability to protect her family with her power. Number nine, it is mentioned in Keeper Lost Cities that Dex knows English, but said in every scene that only Fitz knows a little English. And so this is kind of like both ironic and also it makes sense because Dex is a technopath. He has a lot of knowledge. He has a lot of understanding, a lot of wisdom, and it makes sense that he knows English, but it's also weird because Fitz spent six years looking for Sophie. So wouldn't he pick up a lot of English, but I guess he's looking all around the world, not just in America. So it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't quite match up, but also where did Dex learn English? Why? That doesn't make much sense. It's just definitely a lot of things to get kind of theorizing about. Number 10, Dex is tied with Lynn, Bianca, and Wiley for the main character with the least cover appearances, one each. Like, I don't like Dex that much, but I want Dex to be on a cover. And if it doesn't happen, I'm going to be so upset. I really want Sophie to team up with Dex in book nine and actually go help save Keith. Dex is pretty much needed for this rescue. For 11, Keith has a middle name revealed in a flashback. Well, we don't know the middle name, but he says that he has a middle name. And he basically says that if anyone were to ever find out, it would be humiliating. And so we really hope this detail will be revealed later in the series uh, because we're all just really willing to know and willing to learn because we want to laugh at Keith too, just like I'm sure Keith's friends will too. Number 12, this is actually, we don't talk about this a lot, but Sophie is probably and is one of the only elves to have a criminal record ever since she illegally went to the Forbidden Cities in the first book. Yeah, Sophie has gotten probably in the most trouble out of all the elves, like, in the population is crazy. We did know that the first time Sophie went into the series, there was a tribunal. We didn't know what that was for, and I think we probably won't know. I think it was just kind of an obscure detail that Shannon probably didn't think about too much, but yeah, there's not a lot of criminal activity in the elves because the elves are perfect. Number 13, Fitz was the first character created by Shannon Messenger. This is another So Fitz. I'm going So Fitz heavy with this book, but, like, I can't really find a bunch of so key facts. It's not really strong evidence. Like even though Fitz was the first character, usually you do create your main character as the first character. So it's weird how she created a Fitz first, but I think she was. And I think I read this somewhere that Fitz was supposed to be the main character. So it's a little bit wonky. And we also don't talk about this a lot, but Sophie is so similar to Shannon Messenger in several ways. From Sophie's nervous habit of pulling out her eyelashes to her physical appearance with, with the blonde hair and the brown eyes. Shannon said that Sophie was the version of herself that she wished to be. Additionally, Shannon Messenger owns a stuffed animal identical to Ella. She also has a cat named Marty who passed away recently and she also lives in Southern California. So there's a lot of similarities you could draw. Number 15, Elven music is entirely different from human music. I think we forget that a lot. And it's also quite rare amongst the Lost Cities. The only characters that we know who make music are Della and My Song, Elves at least. We know the gnomes have a different form of music and we know that the dwarves have a different form of music. We also know that Wiley himself likes to listen to human music and has a whole collection. And Lynn is mentioned to listen Listen to Wiley's collection of music. Number 16, we have got Morella has a blue green stuffed Kelpie called Sir Splashy Hugs given to her by Elwyn when her mother had her accident. And I really strongly believe that Morella's mom has a big part to play in this book because why would Shannon write this if it didn't mean anything? That's just my theory, but it's also really cool to see how a lot of characters have, you know, stuffed animals, and that just seems to be a motif in the series, and we love to see it, and it kind of has this, like, hidden meaning that, you know, having a stuffed animal is not, like, gonna make you a bad person or make you wimpy. Siri, stop! But yeah, it doesn't make you, like, a wimpy person or it doesn't make you any less of a person for having a childish toy, you know? It, it provides comfort. Also, number 17, Mr. Forkel's name is Mr. Errol Loki Forkel, which he chose because the initials spell out elf, and because 
because the word Forkel can mean disguise in Norwegian. And that's really cool to me because I'm pretty sure Mr. Forkel, the first Mr. Forkel, one of the twins, he got buried in Norway. So we can really make that connection to Norwegian, Mr. Forkel meaning disguise. And the elf thing is really cool. And also I'm pretty sure Mr. Forkel is an anagram. I know Joey mentioned this in another facts video, but Mr. Forkel and Kurloff are the same spelling but in different orders. All right, we got a few more. 18. Sylvanie is Shannon Messenger's favorite character to write. She said this in either an interview or a tour. I don't know where this came from. It's very obvious that she does because she always has the three exclamation marks, the all caps. Like, I I could understand why that dialogue is the <clears throat> most fun to write because she's just a joy in the series. Number 19. Amy is able to understand the enlightened language because when Alvin Thacker had the washers like the memories of the Freeman family, he also engraved the enlightened language in in the mines in case they need to talk to any elves. And I think Shannon Messenger overall did not do a great job to explain how the language differed because it's like there's one mention of enlightened language and then it's like woo, we don't really get any more mentions across the whole series but this does make a lot of sense why Amy kind of transitioned from being a human to an elf and then magically knowing like what to say like you know it's a bit different so yeah. And the last one, we have 20. In Stina's registry file in Unlocked, it is shown that she has legal permission to use a spy ball. Sophie does not have legal permission to use a sky ball, but she has one. Stina also has legal permission, which makes me think, like, why does she? I mean, I guess she is a regent now, so she should have legal permission for a spy ball, but I don't know what she would do with that spy ball, and I'm kind of nervous, and I don't know if that's important or not. Or maybe it's just a small detail that Shannon was like, okay, let's just give her a spy ball, but like, I don't know. I don't know. But that wraps up this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. For watching all the way to the end, I will give you a sneak peek of the video coming 5-21, May 21st. It's a month, it's a Friday, and it's gonna be super cool. We've been working on it for a while. It's pretty sick, pretty rad, but we got even more fun stuff coming. But yeah, I'll play a short clip. We really do have a lot of fun stuff coming, so make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and if there's one fact you didn't remember. And make sure to leave a comment down below with the comment, or with the comment, with the fact that most surprised you. Where is my Kyoto C book? It's over here, by the way, if you couldn't spot it. Boop, boop. Have a great day, guys. Check out my second channel, Troy Reads, and uh, keep watching our videos. Thank you so much for supporting us. See you next time, and peace out.